Last part of this chapter looks at a couple of different things, and we're going to pull the rest of the virus stuff together. Um, one of the ways we grow viruses is we grow them in cell culture. You have to have living host in order for the virus to be able to go. So what happens in this particular case, the material is taken out. In this particular case, you can see the normal cells. You can see the cells that have become infected, and you get a difference in there. So we grow them in cell culture when we need to culture them. One of the interesting materials we have are what we call viroids, and these are small fragments of circular single-stranded RNA that do not have protein coats in it. Uh, the more we study these things, the more we find out that there are small fragments of RNA in the environment that eventually do get picked up, and sometimes these things can actually be pathogenic, not necessarily on humans, but in this particular case, we're looking at potato spindle tuber viroid. The potato on the right-hand side is a normal potato, and if you look at the other ones, they're kind of spindly and, you know, uh, not very big around. They are infected with a viroid, which is a single-stranded RNA with no protein coat. Question is, would you eat them? And chances are you already have without even knowing it because the rest of the potato looks fine. It just has a weird shape to it. So these, you don't always see them in the supermarket because they are normally culled out, you know, before the packing plant, but they do get into the food stream and they do absolutely no damage to anyone. We also have what we call prions, and prions by definition are self-replicating proteins. And a prion, therefore, is going to go and replicate itself. In this particular case, the prion protein is actually produced by the human body and nerve cells. And what happens is the prion protein is ex excreted to the outside of the cell where it's some sort of receptor. And after a while, it's brought back in and it's broken down and there's no problem. But if it comes in contact with a certain type of other protein, what happens is it becomes modified. So it's no longer functional, cell brings it back in, but the cell can't break it down because it's been modified. Therefore, it gets accumulated, and as it gets accumulated, you get the spongy-like holes in the neural tissue where it is being stored. This is responsible for Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. It is also involved in bovine spongiform encephalomyopathy, or mad cow disease. And prions, therefore, become very important. There are a lot of different genera of viruses that are important for people, and, you know, you can take a look at this. We are not necessarily going to bring this up on the exam. Now, there are a lot of very interesting photographs of things that you can see. This shows you the release of HI HIV virions from the surface of an infected cell. They would spread out and go around and do their nasty bit of damage. So when we look at viruses and what viruses do, they become very important because for the most part, they are going to attack animal and animal systems. This table was in chapter one. And what did it show? It showed that there are all sorts of different types of death that occur from viruses and other parts in there. It shows you where you're looking at cancer. We don't know how many cancers are environmental in nature. We don't know how many of them are actually caused by viruses. And these things are always being checked out and elucidated.